quick look at this earn value exercise. There's a couple things I want to point out as we go along. So I'm going to go a little bit slow here so that you get some of these major points. If you understand a couple of things, you'll be able to do about any earn value exercise. Now, this is an old problem from an older textbook, and you can see certain things here that are provided. It provides, for example, the critical path, the forward and backward pass calculations, and the network diagram. However, we really don't need that for the uh, calculations for earned value. What we really need is not only status reports, but we also need the time phase budget or the project baseline. That's what we have here in this table. There's a couple of things that I want to point out. First of all, we have for each task a planned value, but this is the total planned value that is the amount that we are planning to spend on this particular task until it's complete. So it is not in any way time phase. So it doesn't represent anything over time. It represents the cost or the plan for that particular item on an item by item basis. In this case here we have our task numbers. Those are the most important parts here. And the time phase budget. So this time we have plan value, but we have it over time. So we have it at different weeks that we are, I'm going to call these weeks, I don't know if they're weeks or months, but different time increments. And it shows us how that activity budget is going to be spent over time. This is our project baseline, our time phase budget, and it allows us to then compare how things are actually going with this baseline. So it's going to come into play when we use the plan value from this baseline and when we use it the total plan value. That's going to be the critical part to understand. If you understand when to use each of those, I think you'll basically be good to go and earn value management even if it hasn't clicked in yet what's really happening. A couple other things I want to point out here. We also have a period plan value total, so that's the amount in each period, but we also have a cumulative amount. And at the very end, we have a cumulative amount for our entire project. This is also known as B, whoops, B, A, C. Okay, our budgeted at completion. That's our total plan value. Very good. So let's look at actually doing some of these calculations. So here we have a status report that's required for the end of period two. Now, earned value is simply the percentage complete times the total plan value for a particular activity. So in this case, it's task one. The total plan value is eight. 50% of eight is round about four. Our actual cost comes from our friendly accountants. If you don't have never seen an accountant before, here's what they look like. Very friendly people. And they've told us this is what we've actually spent on our project so far. Coming over here to our plan value, this is now the plan value at this point in time. So I tell my students, pretend like you're Mary Poppins, and you're going to jump, this is Mary Poppins, jumping down into our time phase budget, and we're going to look backwards and see how much were we planning to have spent by now. So you put on your dress and you play like your Mary Poppins, and you jump into the time phase budget and you look backward and see that it's four. Okay. So these calculations then are pretty easy. CV is simply the earned value minus the actual cost. Notice the C there and the C there. And then we have earned value minus the plan value. It's always going to have earned value because this whole thing is called earned value analysis. EV minus AC, zero. EV minus PV is zero. Tally all this up. How are we doing in terms of schedule and budget? Well, we're doing pretty well. Let's go ahead and now look at end of period four. So if I look here, I have task one, 
finished, in other words, 100% complete. So the total plan value, once again, was 8. So 8 times 100% is around about 8. Our actual cost is 10. That is, once again, from our friendly accountant. And our plan value, we're now going to jump into our time phase budget again, look backward, and see that we were planning to spend 4 plus 4, which is around 8. So now if we look at these calculations, 8 minus 10 is a negative 2, so that means that we are over budget by, uh, was it $200? What's the scale here? Yeah, $200. And as, in terms of schedule, we appear to be on schedule. One caveat or warning about schedule variance, we are using time, I'm, I'm sorry, we're using money to measure time, so there are some problems with this. And you can watch one of the other videos that talks about what that problem is. So as in terms of cost, we're not doing so well. In terms of schedule, it looks like we're doing all right, at least by this metric. Okay, let's continue on. End of period six. Okay, we can just kind of carry this down if these were both finished. 25%, 33%, and 0%. Well, I kind of know that 0% times anything is going to be 0. But these other ones were, uh, it was 8, 40, 30, and 20. So 8, 40, 30, and 20. So therefore, 25% of 40 is around 10. There, that is also going to be 33.3%. Let's figure. Uh, it's going to be about 10, and um, then we can do our calculations. Now, what we need to do for PV, before we can do these final calculations, is actually go back up here, and this time we're at the end of period 6. So it's the PV at the end of period 6. We're going to come up here, and we are going to... Look here, I was planning to spend 4 plus 4 is 8, 10, 10, and 10, it looks like. 10 plus 0 plus 0 plus all that. We're looking at all these and adding them up. And so it looks like this would be 8, 10, 10, and 10. So if I now look at the cost variance, 8 minus 10 is once again negative 2. 10 minus 15 is negative 5. 10 minus 12 is negative 2. 0 minus 0 is 0. 8 minus 8 is 0. 10 minus 10 is 0. 10 um, just double checking there. Uh, 10 minus 10 is 0. And then finally uh, 0 minus 10 is a minus 10. Okay, so we end up with a minus 9, minus 10, PV of 38, EV of 28. So hopefully you're starting to get the idea that when we are calculating EV, That is where we use the total plan value for an activity. But when we are looking at this PV here, that is always factoring in this time period. And then we go up here and we pretend like we're Mary Poppins and we jump into the baseline. I'm going to let you do these next ones on your own. So this next three on your own. You can check your work with the solution that's provided. And then come back and we'll fill in these things and calculate out the SPI and CPI as well as the percent complete. So go ahead and pause the video and we'll talk to you then. So let's look at these indices here. I'm going to look at the end of each period. And I need a certain number of things to calculate the SPI and CPI as well as the percent complete. The formula for these things are here, and I'm going to simply use the Q 
cumulative totals from each period in order to calculate these. So in this case, for SPI, it's going to be 4 over 4, or 1.0. 4 over 4, or 1.0 for CPI. And then we only had 4 was our earned value out of our BAC of 248. So we only really have 2% of the project complete at the end of period 2. 8 out of 8 is 1.0. And an 8 out of 10 is, oops, sorry about that, not written very well, equals 0 0.80. And here we have 8 out of 248, and that is 3% done. End of period 6, we had 28 for our EV, and we're going to divide that by the PV, which was 38.74. 38, oops, I'm sorry, not 38, 28, divided by 37 is going to be equal to 0.76. And then 28 divided two by 248 equals 0.11. And a period 8, we had an EV of 38. We divide that by 73. Okay, we're not doing so well in terms of schedule. In other words, for every dollar we put in, in terms of schedule, we're getting 50 cents out. Let's see how we're doing in terms of cost, which is actually more related to dollars. So 38 divided by 55 is point. Six, nine. So for every dollar we put into our project, we're getting 69 cents out of it. Now at this particular time period though, it's 38 out of 248, so we are only 15% done. So perhaps we can get this back on track. Next time period, time period 10, we have 90 out of 108, and that's going to equal 0.8 3, and then 90 out of 124 equals 0.73. So for every dollar we're putting in, we're getting 73 cents of value. In other words, we're going to be significantly over budget. 90 divided by 248 is going to be point. 36 or 36 percent done. 148 divided by 158. 0.94. Now remember we have a particular problem here, and that is with SPI, it will converge at one by the end of the project, even if we are hours or years late. So now this next value is going to be 148 divided by 210 equals 0.70. Okay, so for every dollar we're spending, we're getting 70 cents worth of value. 148 divided by 248. Now it turns out we're 60% done with the project. Okay, so. These two indicators, things are not going so well. I would not trust SPI at this point because we have a lot of work already done. And so I would actually be looking more at my Gantt chart and trying to figure out where things are in terms of schedule to see how far behind we really are. Because I know that SPI uh, is not always the greatest indicator for schedule because we are using money to measure time. But CPI, um, this is not looking so good. Now, could we figure out what the estimated at completion is? So we know what the BAC is. So this is what we were planning to spend on our project. What are we going to actually end up spending? Well, we can do that because we could take, for example, our CPI. 
this is kind of a measure of our speed or our performance. Okay, this is a performance indicator, just in some same way as miles per hour is an indicator of your performance on the road. So really all we have to do is figure out what are our actual costs. We already know that. So our AC uh, is going to be equal to, uh, let me see, at this time point, we're going to do time point 12, is equal to 210. Plus, what is it going to cost to do the remaining work? So uh, we could calculate that. We could look that up. But if you just think about it, the remaining work is going to be the BAC minus the EV, because EV is work we've got done. BAC is the work we're planning to do. And simply divide that by the CPI, and we'd be able to figure out then how much it's going to cost to do that remaining work. So in this case, we would have 248 minus 148, and that is probably around about 100. And so 100 divided by 0 0.70 is what we want to calculate then as far as uh, what is it going to cost to do the remaining work. And in this case, we get that is equal to 142. So if we add that to our actual cost so far, we get 35200. Okay, so that's going to be what our estimated at completion is, where this is our BAC. So we have then a variance of over $10,000, so a significant variance in our budget compared with uh, what we thought we were going to spending, be spending and what it looks like we'll end up spending. So in some cases, we might want to stop and reevaluate that. So hopefully this video helped you a little bit. Otherwise, watch one of the other videos. So I've got two more that will help you along the way.